Hey everybody, I hope and pray that you're doing well. Today as we come to our word from the word. And today that word is manipulation, manipulation. Now, as we're dealing with prayers and conversations with God in 1 Samuel, um, we were talking about the call of Samuel last week, and now we move on uh, years later and we'll see how he's going to lead. Uh, here in 1 Samuel chapter 4 today, and this week we're going to deal with on through chapter 8. So pray that you'd be reading to get all of the details here as always. But one of the things here uh, is really some of these you're going to see are not the prayers, but some other conversations that are going on maybe about God and then their attitude towards God. Uh, because I think it's very relevant for the different things we've been discussing on Sundays and Wednesdays uh, here recently. But in 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 3, you will find the Israelites um, again having trouble and facing defeat with the Philistines. Philistines are mentioned some, I think, 150 times I read um, within First and Second Samuel. So uh, we know this is a threat for them. We've, we've heard about them time and time again. But here in verse 3, it says, And when the people had come into the camp, this is after uh, 4,000 um, soldiers had been killed, Israelite soldiers had been killed. When the, uh, when the people came into the camp, the elders of Israel said, Why has the Lord defeated us today before the Philistines? Let us bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord from Shiloh to us, that when it comes among us, it may save us from the hand of our enemies. Now, that may sound like a great plan. I mean, really. I mean, the, the Ark was a representation of the presence of God. So it seems that at first reading that they are saying, hey, look, we got out here apart from God and away from God. So we need to get the presence of God back here with us. Now, that is a great idea. The problem is, and remember our today, our word today is manipulation. They had grown more accustomed to treating God and the specifically here, the ark, as though it was like a good luck charm. It was if, okay, well, um, you know, I've got my Bible with me, so I know that I'll be doing right. Um, it's kind of the same idea that, okay, well, I've got a cross necklace or a Christian t-shirt uh, like I love to wear and thinking that that means that we're going to be holy or that means that we're going to have victory. Now, we need the presence of God and, and don't think that that's not what I'm, <laughs> don't think anything other than that. We need the presence of God. The problem is, is when we only desire the presence of God because it's going to help us out. This is at times where it seems like, you know, the pagan religions were teaching this, but how much this has been within the body of Christ that even today, that the only time that we want to come together and um, focus on God is when things are going wrong. You know, I reference a lot. We go back to like 9-11 uh, for what happened in our world. And then all of a sudden, everybody turned to God. Well, that's manipulation. You're trying to use him. Uh, you know, I mean, there was... Don't get me wrong, God was also using that judgment to, to point us back to him. But don't just think, okay, well, I'm going to bring in this ark and that's going to ensure victory. That's manipulation. And uh, I told you, I, I pray that you'll, you'll see it and read along in these passages because what's going to happen is now they've gone in, gone into the Holy of Holies. They have taken out the ark. I mean, we already know that uh, that Eli's sons were not doing what they were supposed to be doing there uh, in the um, in the temple. And so you're going to see that they go and get the ark. Bring it out. The sons just don't care. Hey, yeah, y'all go ahead and take it. And then they get out to battle and some 30,000 are killed. The ark is stolen essentially by the enemy. We'll talk a little bit about that tomorrow. But Eli's sons are killed. When he gets the news, he falls back and breaks his neck and dies. Now, just to think about all of this going on, even before Samuel is going to come on the stage, right? And, and that will be coming. But just to think about the manipulation that was going on and then everyone paying for their own poor choices. You know, if he was such a good luck charm, then they would have been victorious, right? That's because God is not a good luck charm. 
the presence of God is a holy and special thing. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to include it in our, our conversations about prayer, because we can't even use uh, prayer as a manipulation tool to try to, to bend God the way that we want him to go. No, we need the presence of God with us each and every day, no matter whether things are going good or things are going bad. We always need the presence of God. So maybe today, the encouragement that I have for you and the encouragement even for myself is that let's make sure that as we come to God in prayer, that we're seeking his will to be done, not our way to become God's will, but rather God's will to be done. Invite in the presence of God in everything that you do today. But be careful not to have the attitude that would manipulate God. God bless you, and I pray you have a great, great day.